Okay, thank you very much for your kind introduction, Miles. And I would like to thank at first the organizers for the kind invitation. So I want to talk about forward backwards plastic differential equation. Uh, and the, because this is a fundamental tool to solve high dimensional nonlinear partial differential equation. And we want to do this using tree based tensor networks or hierarchical. A Taka or hierarchical tensors. And uh, I want uh, to acknowledge my PhD students, Leon Salan, Matthias Oster, and Philipp Trunschke. And although there is another group doing the same with neural, deep neural networks, I mean, this, uh, Niklas Nusken and Lorenz Richter. Niklas is in Potsdam, Lorenz is at ZIP Berlin, SUS Institute, and University of Cottbus. And the first for first uh, motivation, let us uh, consider the hamilton jacobi bellman equation. So we are really interested in, in deterministic and stochastic optimal control. So here in optimal control, one is considering a dynamical system, which is in, in deterministic case, it's an ODE driven by this vector field. And the second part depends on a control parameters U and here we assume for simplicity that the dependence on U is in, the, is, is in a linear way. These are con, often called control affine optimization problems. And this optimal control could, should be chosen such that the corresponding functional over the time interval T0 is T should be plus an end condition should be minimized. And uh, in, in contrast to the deterministic case, we already consider stochastic differential equation where, the, where we add, where we add in, uh, a random perturbation term, W is a well-known Brownian motion. And the central object in the uh, Hamil in, in jacobi bellman equation is the value of function. The value of function at the point uh, X and time T0 it's just the cost if we choose the optimal, optimal control at every time. So it's, it's an optimal cost. And then it can be shown that this value of function satisfies this strange and complicated uh, PDE. It's a time derivative plus. Now the infimum, though we have an optimization over the control with this term in brackets should be zero. And we have a terminal condition, though this is a backward uh, the differential equation. And so e, and e, in our case, the term in brackets depends only quadratically with respect to u. So this minimization with respect to u can be carried out and we get an optimality, an optimality condition that's an optimal control can be, is given by just by the, the, the transpose of the, of, of the function t times the gradient of the, the sort value function. And later I will write the gradient by this first order differential operator. So if we now plug this optimality condition into uh, this, uh, this equation here, we end up with a nonlinear uh, partial differential equation. And that's really high dimensional. D is the size, D is the size of the original the dynamical system, the number of states. So, and the differential operator contains this, this second order term if we have the stochastic case plus a drift term plus an inhomogeneity plus a term where there's so a gradient of the unknown function appears quadratically. This is nasty non, non uh, trivial term. And in the the deterministic case, it's a, it's a backward nonlinear para, hyperbolic equation. And in the stochastic case, it is, it is a little bit uh, smoother. It's a, a parabolic, nonlinear parabolic PDE. But representing the differential operator in terms of tensor products, in tensor product form, to make it available to our to tensor calculus, for example, like uh, Andre did it uh, yesterday, it's not it's not easy here because these coefficients may be, de de may be uh, depending on, on x. 
So if this dependence is relatively complicated and already we have here this, this nonlinearity, then it is very hard to represent the operator in tensor form. So we have to, it's so far, it's too difficult and we need other concepts. And I will talk about these concepts and uh, I try to introduce the forward backward uh, 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 SDEs uh, in future. I want to make a remark that recent progress, recent progress solving such nonlinear high dimensional PDEs has been obtained using deep neural networks and there are, has been papers by Weinan E, Arnold Jensen, Warren and Pham, among others. And these were also already a motivation to consider the, the present uh, uh, problems. Let me give you a brief introduction, starting from the scratch, to motivate the forward backward SDEs. Let us consider for simplicity a homogeneous linear hyperbolic PDE, which is given in this form. So it has this drift term, only this drift term, and it's, it can be written as a partial differential operator applied to E plus a linear a first order differential operator applied to E with terminal conditions. And now we use the methods of characteristics. We are, we, are, uh, we are looking for curves or for trajectories which are solving the ODE uh, the ODE that X is equal to the drift term uh, with the initial condition X. Uh, so this, this is a curve in the state space, this is a curve in the state space. And it's known that uh, if we now consider the function of V at uh, time T and at the uh, state X at time T, that's a function in T, then we are moving along the trajectories and this and the solution of this uh, hyperbolic PDE is constant, is constant along, uh, along these characteristics. That can be easily simply seen that here if we apply the time derivative by chain rule, we use chain rule, we obtain this expression. This expression can be casted into this uh, partial differential operator and uh, it turns out that uh, by the uh, differential equation that this is zero and we have the, a terminal condition that at time t, y at time t is vt at x at time t. Yeah? So this, here's a coupling between the uh, forward and the backward system. Okay, and now I re this is a little bit strange, but I rewrite this as a forward backward ODE. So forward ODE is for the state x, that's an ODE for X and the backward is a scalar ODE for, the, for Y introduced in such a way. And we have seen that Y is constant along, this, along these curves. So a Y dot Y is equal to zero and we have this terminal condition. Okay, and we see that this, this ODE systems, yeah, so this, more or less, it's a method of characteristics, corresponds to the solution of the homogeneous first order PDE. Yeah? So we can compute, we can compute any, a, 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 any V at time X and T by solving this system or approximating this, this system. Yeah? That's, and we don't have curse of, the, of dimensions. Yeah? And now we, we change from the deterministic case, we change from the deterministic case to the stochastic case. So we consider a second order differential operator of this time with is uh, terminal conditions and corresponding to the uh, characteristic curves, we have a forward dynamic, a stochastic forward dynamic, which is given by this uh, forward stochastic differential equation where we have here the drift term F the drift term F, and here we have the uh, uh, Brownian motion term with sigma times the uh, uh, dWt. This is an SDE in the sense of, of Ito, and everything should be uh, opposed in the sense of Ito integrals. And uh, what is important that Xt is an Ft adaptive uh, 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 stochastic process, 
and these properties, this adaptiveness, is a central property one, one have to consider, but I want to make it a little bit simpler. Yeah? So we do the same as in the uh, deterministic case, we introduce a new stochastic process, yt, defined by a function v at point t and uh, taking as a, a, a random variable xt. Yeah? That's formally the same. And now the uh, chain rule is replaced by Ito's formula. So we obtain that dy is equal to partial t of uh, v plus a drift term plus a second order term. The so second order term is a magic term coming from stochasticity plus this red term. Yeah? And this red term in a certain sense is like Cinderella. Though so if we now if we now consider if we not, since we want to have this as an adaptive process, we consider it's a, a condition expectation restricting restricting to the sigma algebra FT, and we obtain the Feynman Feynman cut theorem. That's a, a stochastic analysis formulation of, of Feynman cut integral that says that uh, this function v, this function v defined here, is solving this linear homogeneous linear PDE. Uh, and you see that this red term disappears. Yeah? Though I have ignored this red term for a long time, but I would say this red term plays in the central role. This is Cinderella. Yeah? You don't see it here, yeah? but here is some, here's plot in the shoe. Here's something going wrong. Yeah? And this equation here is, this equation is, or this operator, is a, a backward Kolmogorov equation, okay? And uh, now I come, and now I come to the uh, formulation of a forward-backward system. So the, we have the forward system in this form as a, a stochastic differential equation. But now there's a, 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 a characteristics. These are passes. Yeah, they don't have zero derivative. Now there is a red term on the right hand side. Yeah. And this red term is just a sigma transpose times the gradient of V. So I introduce a new stochastic variable or new stochastic process set T, and this is here. In a certain sense, this set T is something like a Lagrange parameter making this process again adapted. So all these processes, Y, X, Y, and Z are, are now adapted. Okay. And, and then uh, so, 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 so this function we this function we introduce by, by y solves a, a scalar a linear a, a second order PDE, namely the backward Kolmogorov equation. And it's backward here. You see the x is forward dynamics, and the a dynamics for y is backward. Yeah? But all these, these processes, they are FS adapted in the sense they are adapted to the, uh, e, 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 to the uh, stochastic process X. Okay. Okay, and now in the next step, and for this, you don't really need, for this, you don't really need this red term. Now, now we come, we want to go a little bit further. We want to consider nonlinear PDEs. And we do this nonlinear PDEs by just, uh, okay, so uh, let me first introduce, so far I have considered homogeneous uh, PDEs, and I already can consider an in homogeneity by adding such a driver here, and I have to integrate them over uh, the, the trajectories. Yeah? But now I can already, from this inhomogeneous uh, equation, I can already introduce nonlinearities making these functions depending on y and more complicated depending on z. And that's what I will do next. So here we have the definition of y as a, as a function, unknown function b of t and the, a, a, the stochastic process z is given by sigma transpose times the gradient of v. Okay, and if sigma is regular, so it's, a, it's an invertible square matrix, I can rewrite the function h tilde 
which it's a function of T x and V. This is the nonlinearity, and here is a nonlinearity with respect to the so it's a, 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 a first order differential operator. Can we write this as a function a t depending on t x v n z with this? Okay, and then we then we obtain a stochastic forward backward system. It is coupled. It is coupled in this sense only by the terminal condition y of of t. Okay, and it is uh, yeah, and it's already coupled by the, what is important. So this, this depends strongly on, on the forward process. And now using by the same, by Ito's lemma, one can, can show the, what is often called the nonlinear Feynman cat theorem, that this function V satisfies the nonlinear PDE, satisfies nonlinear PDE, that it's a, it's a partial of V plus the backward Kolmogorov operator applied to V plus this nonlinearity term V is, is zero over all times. And we have the, the terminal condition that V at, at, at time capital T and X is a given function V T of X. And now already this uh, um, hamilton jacobi bellman equation can be easily casted for stochastic uh, uh, optimal control in this form. Okay. And what is really nice, but I want to skip it. For FPDEs, we have almost a closed theory. So we have existence and so on. And it gives us a hint for numerical approximation. Now for the time stepping, we do the classical, we do the classical uh, Euler-Majorana scheme, which is if we do an, an explicit Euler method, then X in the next time step, so X at time T n plus one, uh, is given by x at time t plus at first uh, delta t times the, uh, uh, the vector field f at time x, so it's it's explicit plus, and this is uh, is in the stochastic case a random kick given by this term. This is a well known uh, this is a well known Monte Carlo scheme, and it, in mathematics it is called Euler Majorana scheme. That is here. This parameter can be is chosen normally independent and normally distributed for each time in the world. Okay. And now I come to the numerical solution of the PDEs. So for the for the forward for the forward ODE and for the linear backward Kolmogorov equation. We need only to have appropriate solvers of the ODE, or here in the deterministic case of a stochastic differential equation. This is namely, this is Euler Majorana. And this is what Monte Carlo methods are doing. They are computing the solution at a time t, t on the time steps tn at point x, point wise. Yeah? So this is a value. This is only a single value. Yeah? But now we, we need, now we have this, this Cinderella. We need not only the value, we need the gradient of this function. Okay, so this can be computed without, of course, of dimensionality. But now we need an explicit representation of this function, at least in, in a neighborhood of X. Yeah? So, and then we will face the curse of dimensions. Okay, let us go a little bit further. How can we do this? And I would like to introduce a, a, a standard algorithm, which has several names. The, in, in the deterministic case, I will call it the, a generalized semi-Lagrangian scheme. So I'm choosing a, a finite number of collocation interpolation of sample points, yeah? xi, in a subdomain of Rd. Okay, and the first step, is pointwise. I transporting these states according to the forward dynamics. Okay, and I have to here. I have to uh, uh, use Euler-Majorana scheme, and I have to use uh, an integration rule for the right hand side by quadrature. And then I obtain the uh, the uh, value function or the unknown function at time t at this at this. 
okay, not at these points X of T, at certain points, okay. And now I have, in a second step, I have to recover, these are only function values at certain points. I have to interpolate between these function values. So this is a recovery step. I want to recover a function by a certain interpolation. And you see what kind of interpolation one can do. It's relatively obvious if you, uh, 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 if you are coming from machine learning, you can do regression. Yeah? And, uh, so, uh, and it's already uh, clear that if you have only finite many points, you can't do this only in, uh, uh, in a certain model class, which has only finitely many parameters. It can be given by uh, deep neural networks. It can already be given by a, a tensor networks uh, based on multi, for example, multi, multi polynomial uh, representations of the functions. So that's what we do. We, have uni we are using univariate polynomials and we are replacing the, uh, the, uh, in the function, so it's a multi polynomials, the so coefficients in terms of a, 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 t a tensor model. Here we use particular, we used tensor trends or matrix product states. And if we have this representation explicitly get, given, we can update a, 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 a randomized set N by taking the gradient at these points multiplied with uh, the, uh, this term. Okay. Now I come to the way how we, we, how we uh, do this interpolation. And here I want to follow a, 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 a simple standard strategy. I consider that I have an optimization functional. I have an optimization functional. And my solution is a minimizer of this optimization problem over the whole of full space. This is not feasible. I use the idea of Ritz and Galerkin. I am restricting, I am constraining my functional to a model class. In Ritz Galerkin, it was a finite dimensional space, but instead of a finite dimensional space, I will use a model class. And here it's, an, it's a nonlinear, uh, a smooth, smooth manifold uh, by a tender representation of a prescribed rank. But even this minimization is no, not feasible at all. Yeah? So to make it computable, in our case, we need to represent the functional by computable functional. This is a surrogate functional, and you will see how we do this. And now this minimization problem can be tackled. I do not say that we can find the minimizer, but we can find something which comes quite close to the minimum. Yeah? Okay. And uh, I go, uh, I uh, just I go a little bit further. Uh, what we all, do, what we in our case concretely are doing. So we use univariate orthogonal polynomials, and we build up as a tensor product basis of these polynomials and say uh, uh, linear coefficients in front. We represent by tensor trains or matrix product states. Okay. And I come a little bit back a little bit later to this optimization problem. And now I can look to the, to the backward scheme. Now for the, for the Y, I have to step backwards, but keeping in mind that we have this adaptors. Uh, so this is, this is now the, the formula for the, uh, for the uh, uh, process of YT. Y at uh, time TN plus one is YT. You see this, this formula. And now we are uh, replacing this term by, an, by a term uh, even implicitly from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side. But then we have this, this additional term. And then we have this additional term. Let us keep it. Yeah? So with this simple quadrature, we get again a, 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 a thing like the Euler-Majorana scheme for this Yn. But now the uh, the uh, yn is adapted. So if we take if we take the uh, uh, if we take the uh, conditional expectation with respect to the sigma algebra tn, if we project it, then the red term, this term, this disappears, and we have this this formula. Okay, and this yn is this conditional expectation. 
But this conditional expectation can be characterized by a minimization problem, namely minimizing the square loss in general. Uh, but the, uh, the exact expectation cannot be, uh, uh, cannot be computed. I will show a little bit later. But if we have, if we have solved this problem, yeah, so we are computing a function yn, that's its y at tn, and then we can update the, uh, the gradient and the uh, uh, Cinderella, the, the red term zn. Okay. I ran out. So uh, you have about five minutes left. Okay. And also, there's yeah. a question in the chat for you by uh, Jen Feng Lu. I, I can't see the chat. Can you ask? Okay. He, he asked, I think, two slides ago about. Is there a time dependence in the value function here? There, is, there can be a time dependence in the value function. Yeah? And the time dependence is here uh, written by the sub index n. Yeah? And here even by n. Okay? So I have a finite time problem, uh, a, a finite horizon problem here. Yeah? Okay. Uh, let me uh, go a little bit further. I want to show how variational Monte Carlo works. And in this case, it is the same as risk minimization in, in machine learning. I have this expectation I'm minimizing over all functions. I replace the, the space L2 of all functions by my model class, yeah? and I replace the expectation by the mean. And this, this, is, uh, uh, this is just now functional where I can compute the gradient. And this is exactly what a physicist is doing in variation in Monte Carlo, but for, with, not for the L square loss, but for the uh, 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 mm, Rolle quotient. Okay. Okay. I have other choices for uh, the model classes, for example, the deep, deep neural networks, and already one has uh, the alternatives for that end. But what comes important is that now we need to add some spices to make the computation much better. So sometimes the a, a terminal condition is hard to be casted into tensor products. So uh, one can just add to the tensor manifold is the linear space containing the terminal condition. But now that we have a fundamental problem that our set N, so if we, we have to, we have to uh, compute the capital is a, a function Vn by regression, but we need the gradient. Yeah? And that's, that's, that's a difficult, practically a difficult thing. And we are curing this by doing a regularization in the ALS algorithm. And we are just dropping, and, and then we are just, by curing the ALS minimization, we are more or less removing this, this constraint. Yeah? So that means that we keep that we are really co compute an approximation in our model space, which is uh, sufficiently smooth, so that the, that the, the computation of the gradient should be quite correct. And this is an important step. Without this procedure, we don't work. There are additional improvements I do not want to talk about. Uh, here I have example about deterministic HAD, but I want to show you uh, uh, some examples uh, from a paper of Nuskin, Richter, and Salan. Salan is my PhD students. The first two do the neural network discretization and Leon do the, do the tensor products, and this is available on archive. And this is a 100 dimension Allen Kahn equation. And here you see that the, the for, uh, mainly that is it, so, so, in, in this case, uh, uh, from the paper of Van E, we have a reference solution in the point x0. Yeah? And with the TT, with the explicit method, this can be computed with very low ranks up to, I would say, uh, a, a promil, uh, a, 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 up to this accuracy. And the neural network implementation is at least one or two. It is uh, two uh, magnitudes worse. Yeah? So if we use more, more samples for the neural networks, then it becomes better. In the computation time, it's just the other way around. The so tensor networks are 10,000 times faster than the neural networks. And the same already appears for this simple hamilton jacobi bellman equation. For this, using Kolob transformation, uh, Wynani have provided 
a reference solution. And in this example, we, we are making the same experience that we are outperforming neural networks by several magnitudes. But this paper here consider already other examples where the, the, the tensor products are less favorable. Yeah. But I would just uh, be, be, uh, please you to have a look into this into this uh, page. Okay, there might be some comments, but uh, here I would list uh, the list of references. Thank you very much. Thank you.